All right, so what's good, everybody? Today, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be taking a look back at the prelude, but this video isn't talking about gameplay. This video is about the prelude's presentation and story itself. I'll be doing another video tomorrow on the gameplay, but for today, we're just going to be focusing on the story. So this year, we'll be playing as AI, a young NBA prospect who left college a little bit too early and ended up going undrafted, so he took his chances and went overseas. So after you finish creating your player, the prelude opens up with a late game scenario cutscene. And honestly, I, I really, I wasn't getting the familiar cringe vibes that I usually get from NBA 2K cutscenes. And also uh, I would like to point out great value Jeremy Lin alert. Like he even got the same number play. Like, Nigga, you're not Jeremy Lin. But I wasn't getting the typical cringe 2K vibes up until they decided they wanted to give me a quick time event. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with quick, quick time events at all, but it just felt like a page out of Madden's book, like The Journey. And it's like, what, what is this, Resident Evil 4, nigga? Why is, why is 2K giving me a quick time event? It, it's just funny. It's kind of funny to me. And I, I decided I was going to wait and see, like, oh, could I could I not pass it to him? You know, could I, could I be selfish and take the shot myself? When you don't press A, nothing happens. It just freezes until you pass the ball. So from the jump after the game is over, AI shows his true crybaby colors that I can only imagine we're going to be seeing a lot in NBA 2K19. He complains about not getting the ball and not getting the last shot. His translator was like, good job, you pushed the pace. He was like, oh, what does that mean? Like, I can see where they're going with this character and I understand what they're trying to do with him. They're going to develop him. Like, he's going to grow throughout the story, but ugh, the first stages is just so cringy. Like, I, I hate those crybaby characters. You, they, they always do this in sports movies. The protagonist is some crybaby who don't appreciate his life and blah, blah, blah. But I'm not complaining, man, because anything is better than fresh lettuce and Jug, bruh, all last year, everybody complained about be fresh in the cutscenes. Be, fre be fresh is not worse than Lil Jug. Lil Jug, the little dude from the locker room who did all the cringy dances, is 10 times worse than be fresh. And nobody got on his head about it. Nobody said nothing about it. Everybody just complained about be fresh. But anyway, you know what? We're not even here for that. Let's get back to the prelude. So before you play your actual first game in the prelude, there's a cutscene with your team captain, you know, Great Value Jeremy Land. And he's telling you why the crowd is so loud tonight. And it's because the man with the red hair, that's what I call him, the man with the red hair. <laughs> Cause I don't know his real name and I, I can't speak Chinese, so I'll probably butcher it anyway. But I like this character. I genuinely like this character. 2K introduced him in a very smooth way, very un-2K like. Instead of going with an over the top, uh, an over the top cutscene where you and him get into an argument like Jackson Ellis, or just any kind of over the top cutscene where something crazy happens and you're like, oh, who is this guy? Only thing you hear is your teammate tells you, my nigga, this dude is the truth, and that's all you got to go on. And you hear the crowd, so you're like, I right, bet. And then when you get out there. And he see, you see him do, he don't gotta, he don't need no cutscene, bro. He do all the talking with his game. I see this dude do some, on Twitter, he wasn't getting off against me. Well, I won't lie. The first time I played the prelude, I played it twice. The first time I played, he did go for 30, but I wasn't guarding him. If this guy ends up being a part of the, my career in 2K19, I think that would be pretty cool, especially considering, like, you just play one game against him, and, you know, like, nothing crazy happened, but then you end up playing him in the NBA, and then y'all become friends or rivals but also if he's not an nba 2k19 that's fine too i like the way they introduced him they just didn't do nothing over the top and it was cool and real quick while we talk about characters i like i'm gonna need them to bring that little chinese point guard from the team you play on yeah i'm gonna need them to bring him with me and 2k19 to the league because that right there is asian gary payton i don't care what nobody say i don't know how i don't know why i don't know if it was like this for everybody but when i was playing he was getting so many cookies bro like this man was creating so many fast break chances like, if you put the ball on the ground and you want to dribble in front of him like you cute, he was taking it. It was going the other way almost every time. It was wild. But anyway, look who it is. Falcon himself took a break from fighting Thanos so he could come bless us in 2K. 2K really pulled out all the stops here. They really got Papa Doc. Yes, that is Papa Doc from 8 Mile. He also played Tupac in the Notorious movie. If you think I'm lying, look it up. That is not a joke. He really played Pac. I can't even take this dude serious. His real name's Clarence. And if you don't get that reference, then just click off the video, bro. What's the matter, dog? You embarrassed? This guy's a gangster? His real name's Clarence. I guess the point of this scene is to demonstrate to us AI's frustration of life in a foreign country. He don't know nobody. He don't got no friends. He don't have anything to do. Which, if the movie Love and Basketball taught me anything, is that that is a real thing that happens to some people. So look at 2K incorporating some realism into their story. And I don't know, but if you ask me, that's a lot more appealing than the time-traveling basketball-playing DJ 
whose name just so happens to be, wait for it, DJ. So in this flashback to the night where AI went undrafted, the first thing that I noticed was that they finally fixed the height and cutscene issue, which is very trivial, but thank you 2K, they, they finally got it. And going off of how these two interacted with each other all throughout the prelude, I'm guessing in 2K19, they're gonna have a very complex relationship and maybe 2K will give you the option to like be friends with them or they'll give you the option to become a rival with them or maybe not, you know, 2K don't always give us choices. But really, I don't even need to talk about any more of their cutscenes in the prelude after this because I can sum it up with this. Their entire relationship is AI is like, oh, I want you to validate me. Validate me, I need your validation. And the Corey guy is like, eh, I don't know if I want to validate you. I'd give you a little bit of validation, but at the same time, I got to let you know that you're not on my level. So that's, that's, that's really all that it is with these two. So let's just move along. All right, peep gang, peep gang. Y'all ready for this? Look, look closely now. What do you see? I see fake Cheerios and what else? A Gatorade ad. Now y'all know, y'all know 2K had to come in here and give us some ads. Just even if it's just one, which y'all know it ain't just one. Y'all know it ain't just one. But they had to hit us with some ads at some point or another. Get your money, sis. I see you, 2K. So the last game you play in the prelude, of course, is against the NBA stars. And, and this is kind of weird to me because this wasn't just any NBA team. This wasn't the NBA uh, Western Conference All-Stars. This was the best players from both, both conferences in the NBA playing up against not a Chinese All-Star team. Just some regular Chinese team in real life. This team would have lost by 200 points. That's wild, but that's that's not what we're here to talk about. Your team star player geeking out over NBA players coming out of the tunnel. That was hilarious to me. Like when he was like, "Oh my God, Stephen Curry!" Like I, I thought it was, I thought that was hilarious. I was in here actually laughing. So kudos to 2K for not making me want to curl up in a fetal position in their attempts at humor. But also having us automatically be down by 10 at half, and no matter what the score is, I was beating them niggas by like 20. But having us be down by 10 at half is lazy writing. How do you just determine what happens, my nigga? Make a couple different cutscenes for what happens if we're winning or if we're losing. You can't just, never mind, I'm not even gonna get all stressed out about it. It's just the prelude. So cue part two of the NBA 2K19 preludes, quick time events. This one, you know, this one wasn't the same as the first one. This was more Telltale's The Walking Dead type QTE. You know, they gave you an option of some actions to do. And your action determines what happens in future cutscenes. For example, if you dunk on them, and you don't help him up uh, after the game in the tunnel, you two will talk about getting lunch together and and then you'll both just go your separate ways instead of talking to the press. But if you help him up after you dunk on him, you'll talk to the press together. I don't know what that changes, but it, it changed the end of a cutscene. So yeah, you know, they on their Telltale to Walking Dead type jump. 2K, if y'all gonna make some Telltale games, bro, I got some ideas. Somebody need to go ahead and make a Telltale Spider-Man game. Hire your boy. So after you play the NBA Stars, you and Corey end up hanging out and going to some arcade where you guys play NBA 2K8 with the Rockets and the Celtics. Uh, 2008 Tracy McGrady on that game? That nigga is amazing. I bust that man ass. But of course, our boy AI decides he's gonna throw yet another temper tantrum, all because Corey said, I hope you find somewhere you're comfortable. So, so 2K, I, I see what you're doing with the character, right? Or what, what I think you're doing with the character. If you're not doing this with the character, then you know it's just gonna be annoying to play with this nigga. But what I think they're doing is they're, they're leaving room for improvement, you know? I imagine at some point in the my career in 2K19, he won't be such a bitch no more. Like he'll he'll stop crying and complaining about everything. But if not, then we'll just be stuck with him and I'll just be skipping cutscenes all year, which is cool, you know? I got no problem skipping these weak cutscenes, my nigga. But it looks like he's gonna have an actual personality. He's gonna be a person with like ideas and feelings and, and you know, just things that make up an actual character. Unlike DJ last year who, like when you think about it, you don't even gotta think about it that hard. We really don't know nothing about DJ. We just, it was like, he's a blank canvas and you just, he was a blank canvas, really. The only thing we knew about him was that he used to be a DJ and his best friend was B-Fresh. That's, that's the extent of our character knowledge of DJ. So 2K is going to make this guy a bit more uh, layered, I guess. Hopefully it works out. Hopefully it's not annoying. But like I said, the gameplay version of this video is coming tomorrow. I'll be talking about gameplay. So don't be in the comments like, oh, you only talk about stupid stuff. You are stupid if you say that because I told you in the beginning of the video that we talk about gameplay tomorrow. So... If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, man. Drop that like. And if you want to join the Shanghai fam, man, subscribe today. So as always, I'm D. Brown Shanghai, and I'm up out of here.